Say hello. Say hi, internet friends. Hello guys, welcome to today's video. I'm so excited because we're finally doing a q and A. I I know it's been a while since the last one and I know it's been a while since I asked you guys for your questions. I tend to do that sometimes. I just get all these ideas for videos in my head and then I get all gung-ho about them. Sorry, there's cat hair stuck in my chapstick. I get all gung-ho about them and then I realize that recording and editing and uploading videos is really time consuming and I cannot get them done as fast as I can think of them. YouTuber problems, it's no big deal. We're gonna go back to the picture where I asked y'all for your questions. Okay, question number one, this is a really good one and I honestly have not put enough thought into this answer yet and it's something that I want to do definitely in December and the question is, what are some of your goals for 2018? That is honestly, Largely TBD because so much can change in a year. I don't remember specifically what my 2017 goals were, but I feel like even all the good stuff that I accomplished this year, a lot of it wasn't on my radar initially at the end of 2016, and that's just because life can change so dang fast. Some of my more like ambiguous, important goals are continuing to put out value and provide value to my audience, my internet friends, and give you guys helpful, informative, entertaining content, you know, on a super regular basis. Getting more consistent with my YouTube game is something that I have been working on and will continue to work on um, in 2018. So I hope that I am better with that in 2018. Other goals include getting a dog, which if you guys watched my last video, which is like a house hunters video of our apartment hunt, um, getting a dog is really important to us. Another goal is to really feel like I have my health back on track. 2017 was a roller coaster when it came to my health and like mental and physical health. So in 2018, I really want to feel like I have my physical health 100% um, in check, at least for the majority of the time. I understand that there are highs and lows, but I just wanna feel like I am in tune with my body again, in tune with my mind again and I'm definitely on the right path, but it's something that I will continue to work on and will strive for in 2018. Another goal is to um, really give my all to the mastermind that I enrolled in. That starts in January. If you want more info on that, let me know and I can totally do like a video on it or a biz dev video or whatever you want. But those are some of my goals for 2018. I know that's kind of a long-winded convoluted answer, but I feel like my goals are a little bit ambiguous still and I can totally update you once they get a little bit more concrete. Very important question coming up. Are you for or against pineapple on your pizza? Hashtag pineapple belongs on pizza people. Pineapple belongs on pizza. That's all I'm saying on that subject. Next question is very uh, relevant, I suppose. Why did you move to California and where are you moving next? We moved to California because it's something that we had like always been wondering about, curious about. It was just kind of one of those, I don't want to say like bucket list, but it's one of those things that we just wanted to try and see how it went. We also, when I say we, I'm talking about my boyfriend Andrew and I, we have a lot of friends here, so that was a huge draw, of course, because we didn't have that many friends in Minnesota. Like, actually, most of our friends are in California. And then another thing is when we moved out here, Andrew and I were both really into competitive bodybuilding. We were really into, like, the bodybuilding fitness scene, I guess. And so being close to the mecca of bodybuilding or Venice Golds was like a draw and all of that stuff. So we really liked visiting here and we were like, okay, well, if we liked visiting, that's probably gonna be pretty sick to live here. In a way, that was not true. Visiting a place and living there are totally different. When you live there, it's very different because you're not like doing only the fun stuff, you're doing everything. And it turns out, I don't really like living in Los Angeles. Well, especially Venice. I feel like I would have had a different experience if we would have moved to a different part of LA, like maybe Santa Monica or somewhere a little more suburban, like in the valley or something. But I particularly don't like living in Venice. It's kind of sketchy for, especially it's very expensive to live here and it's kind of sketchy. There are always homeless people, mentally unstable people, all sorts of different characters like on the streets all times of the day. 
and I don't really feel comfortable walking alone, especially at night. I also am not really a big beach person, so I don't really enjoy that aspect of living in Los Angeles. I know that might be crazy, but I grew up with hashtag Minnesota Lake Life, and um, the beach has just never been a personal favorite. And I also just don't really care that much about like being a competitive bodybuilder anymore, so being at the Mecca, like I don't even have a membership there anymore. So just basically priorities and values have really changed this year and Venice, California is not necessarily the best fit for us anymore. And thankfully Andrew is on the exact same page with that. We both don't really like it. Um, so that's not to say like Los Angeles sucks across the board or anything like that. It's just not worth it to us. It's very expensive to live here and we don't feel as though we enjoy it enough to be worth the amount of money we pay to live here. So we're moving to Austin, Texas, which is a very like progressive kind of um, like unique, cool vibe city too. It's gonna be a better fit for us because it has more of that like hospitable, charming vibe rather than the Los Angeles like rat race cutthroat vibe. <laughs> and I don't mean that in a bad way, but People in Los Angeles are here for like a very specific purpose. They're here, at least the people that move here, and a lot of people are transplants. You don't meet that many Los Angeles natives, honestly, or at least I haven't. And people come to Los Angeles for a very specific purpose. Typically that's like career oriented or something like that. And they wanna climb a ladder. And sometimes it's hard to like meet people or find friendship because um, everyone is very concerned with like that aspect of their life rather than making non-networking relationships, if that makes sense. So Austin is definitely a lot more welcoming, a lot more of like a southern hospitality vibe. We also really like that it's a lot more nature focused and people love to get outdoors, paddleboarding on the lake, running on the trails. There are so many parks and green areas and stuff like that. So I'm just really excited. I feel like that's going to be a much better fit for us. We don't regret moving to Los Angeles one bit. It was a great experience a great experiment and we are glad we did it because otherwise we probably would have always wondered like what if we would have done it would we have liked it all that stuff and it's all also been great being by friends of course so no regrets not even a letter we're definitely ready for the next chapter a few questions were asking me about if i plan to own a horse someday or like what my plan is for my equestrian career slash hobby and honestly, I have not been to the barn in three and a half weeks, and that makes me really sad to say that, but I'm going tonight finally. I do want to get a horse eventually, but I'm not sure if like this phase of my life is necessarily the best time to do it because getting a horse is a really big commitment. It's obviously very expensive, but the main thing is like the time commitment, and when you're getting a horse, you are committing to going to the barn X number of times every single week without fail and like yeah you can go on vacation but you have to like make sure that your trainer is going to be like substituting your rides and I don't know it's just a lot of time commitment a lot of energy commitment a lot of financial commitment I was super gung-ho about getting a horse like a couple months ago and I started like my pony fund as I call it I like started saving up and everything so it's definitely a plan of mine down the road but I don't know if it's gonna happen like next year or when it will happen because I need to be in a place where it's a very top priority of mine and if I get really busy with work or whatever it might be, which is why I didn't go to the barn in November basically, you can't really do that when you own a horse of your own. So for now, I'm just going to continue taking lessons with school horses, maybe potentially lease a horse. Once we get to Texas, there are a lot of really good barns around Austin. If you have any suggestions by the off chance that you're an Austinite equestrian watching this, let me know if you know of any show jumping slash eventing barns. But yeah, it's just like a really big commitment, so I'm not going to say for sure one way or the other, but I have started saving for it, and I anticipate it being in my future within the next like five years. Do you sleep barefoot or with socks on? Very important question to be asked today. But I tend to run cold, and actually a symptom of Hashimoto's, which is the thyroid condition I have, is that you have cold feet and cold toes, so I actually do usually sleep with socks on to alleviate that. Otherwise, Andrew gets really mad if my icy feet touch him. So I try to wear some socks, especially fuzzy socks, to bed. And I know some people are like repulsed by that. It's kind of a polarizing issue, but I typically do wear socks to bed. Sorry. 
Okay, so many questions asking me about my experience with Hashimoto's and how my health or how I feel has changed since I have kind of taken control of my symptoms and like made strides with lifestyle changes and stuff like that. So the main differences I have made are A, I have changed my diet, I've cut out gluten entirely, I've I've been like 99.5% gluten free. I'm not like super, super strict about it where if I go to a restaurant, I like can't eat just in case it's cross contaminated or like Thanksgiving, I had a little stuffing and you know, stuff like that. But I'm 99.5% gluten free. I don't buy gluten, I don't keep it in the house. So the only time I have it is if it's like contaminated in, in a restaurant or like a very special occasion. And I have found that to make a really big difference. I actually felt really, really awful after Thanksgiving. The reason why gluten is a thing with thyroid conditions is something called molecular mimicry. Google it if you're curious. Basically eating gluten kind of like causes your body to not be friends with your thyroid and that obviously makes you feel pretty shitty. So I didn't feel so good the day after Thanksgiving and it's definitely not worth it to be eating significant amounts of gluten right now. Other things I've done are taking supplements. I have a lot of different like natural supplements for gut health, for um, like adrenal support, thyroid support, different vitamins, minerals, adaptogens, CBD, like all sorts of stuff that I'm taking to just support all of the natural processes and give my body what it needs to heal and recover. And I am working with a nutritionist who recommended all this stuff. I'm not just like shooting in the dark, but I've noticed a huge difference and when I'm consistent with those, I definitely feel better. And then also I am supposed to be taking um, a natural thyroid medication called Armor. And unfortunately my doctor or the pharmacy or someone dropped the ball and I have been without my medication for over a week now. But surprisingly, I feel like 90% without it. So I think that's really promising. Hopefully I won't have to rely on it for the rest of my life. But for now, it's still relatively new as far as like the diagnosis and working my way through that. So that's where we're at. And I've noticed a huge difference through like that three prong approach. This is a really funny question because it's something I've dreamed about honestly. And it's if you could have your own cooking show, what would it be called? I've thought about this many, many times about how I'd love to have a food network show or like some sort of cooking show, not necessarily on the food network, but I would love to have like a cooking slash travel show. Maybe it would be Marie Wold Eats World. That's like what I hashtag my travel foodie pictures with. But I would love to do that. Just like traveling to different places, trying local cuisine. That's one of my favorite things to do. And I would love to put some sort of like health or fitness spin on it too. But I'm not quite sure how that would combine. I'm sure there's a way, but I haven't sat down to brainstorm necessarily. But if anyone has connections to TV executives looking for a new food show, hit up your girl. Andrew. Yeah. Come here. Come here. We have question. We filmed a couples Q&A like a few months ago and we left you guys with a cliffhanger on if we are planning to get married and if so, when. So our real answer is <laughs> really? We talk about this all the time. Okay, our real answer is that <laughs> our real answer our real <laughs> Let's choose my words carefully here. The real answer is yeah, we are planning on getting married. Like, isn't that obvious? I mean, yes. I haven't proposed us. yet. Okay, so we're planning on it, but here's the thing is we have other priorities right now, such as moving, getting a dog, working on our careers. That is all like priority above him buying a ring or us planning a wedding and paying for a wedding and all of that stuff. So it's like in the cards. What? By the way, if there's anyone that lives in the Austin area, um, I need a videographer. DM me. Anyway. <laughs> So there's a lot of stuff that we want to like put before that. We're not in any rush. I'm only 22 years old, so I don't feel like we're like racing against the clock or anything. And Andrew's 25, so it's got a little So bit. I am racing against the clock. <laughs> so oh man, I saw a gray hair the other day. It's all downhill from here. Oh God. Will you quarter still, life crisis. Will you still love me when I'm old? 
So yes, it is long story short in the cards, but not in the immediate future. Someday he'll propose eventually. <laughs> Maybe. If you're nice. If you're a nice okay. lady. <laughs> I am a nice lady out. You're crushing my bicep. Okay. So there's your answer, folks. We are tying the knot someday, but not today. A few people have asked how I have dealt with unintentional weight gain. That is something that I've definitely gone through this year. I'm sure you've noticed, it's pretty hard to miss. <laughs> um, I basically have gained weight for a couple of reasons, like three reasons. One is that I came off of back to back to back preps, so my metabolism was pretty suppressed. And when you go back to eating at a somewhat regular human level after that, your body tends to store fat more easily. And then two, I was diagnosed with a thyroid condition and that makes it um, a lot easier to gain weight as well. So even if your diet or exercise habits don't change, um, you can still gain weight with that. And that's definitely something that I've noticed. And then another thing is that I have tried to be better about eating intuitively, not tracking macros. I've traveled a lot, so I've just been a little bit more lax with my nutrition in 2017 in general. So definitely have had a lot of memories over macros moments. Those three things combined have led to a substantial amount of weight gain, but I actually am starting a little bit of a responsible, very responsible and healthy fat loss phase under the guidance of my nutritionist next week so that's really exciting yeah my thyroid and my body is kind of in a good position now to where we can try it and see how it goes no promises but i'm definitely going to be honoring my body listening to my body and trying to get back down to a little bit more of like a comfortable weight for me right now honestly most of my clothes don't fit how i like them to fit i'm wearing mostly stretchy pants and um yeah so <laughs> i mostly just want my clothes to fit again and feel a little bit more athletic and agile. <laughs> I think this is going to be the last question because this is probably already a bit of a long video, but it says, what's your best entrepreneurial advice to girls looking to start their own business slash work for themselves? So my advice for this is twofold. Number one, you just have to freaking start because if you're waiting until you're super comfortable, you're super confident, you feel like you've got this, then you have waited way too long. You should feel scared, you should feel uncomfortable, you should feel nervous, um, and that's that means that you care about something and that you want to succeed at it and that you should definitely go for it. Um, if you wait too long, like you're never going to get to the top and all the people that are the most successful are the ones that took risks, they just took the leap and they believed in themselves, they believed in their ability to figure shit out when it gets messy or hard or whatever, they just believed in their goal, they believed in their mission, their passion, and you just have to freaking start and believe in yourself, okay? And then number two, Christian Guzman actually made a really good video about this the other day, and it is that you have to take initiative. You have to work on developing yourself, working on developing your business, whatever it might be, you have to like take initiative to do that stuff before it becomes a problem. So if you're waiting for stuff to break down, whether that's physically or the structure of your business, or you know products or services that you offer whatever it might be if you wait for things to be broken then you waited way too long you should be taking initiative to make sure that things are running smoothly things are improving you're learning more you're becoming better at your job and it should be a constant process of improvement without anyone like hand holding you or telling you what to do so take initiative and start before you're ready both of those things are just absolutely mandatory in order for being successful on your own as an entrepreneur. So we are going to wrap the video there. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I really missed doing Q and A's. They're pretty fun. So if you liked it and want to see another one, definitely give this video a like, and I will do one in the future, probably in the next month or so. I do still have a bunch of questions left on that Instagram post that I can pull from. So just let me know. Also, if you have something that surprised you or something that you can relate to, definitely leave a comment down below so we can bond and be hashtag internet friends. And I think that's gonna be it. So thank you guys so much for watching. Oh my gosh, I forgot to tell you guys, we hit 50,000 friends on YouTube and that is just mind blowing to me. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate your love and support. It literally means the world to me and I will absolutely 
be doing a huge giveaway. So let me know actually in the comments down below if you'd rather have me do one huge mega ginormous prize for just one person or split it up into like a few prizes, all really awesome but more people get to enjoy it. So leave a comment down below which one you think would be better or which one you would be more likely to enter and I will take your feedback for the giveaway. I'm gonna reach out to a bunch of different sponsors and stuff like that to see what we can do and I promise it's going to be epic. So please give this video a like if you enjoyed it. I really enjoyed hanging out with you. Thanks for taking some time out of your day to hang out with me. And also don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the little notification bell because that tells you when I post a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Big hugs for all of my internet friends and I will see you in the next one. Bye!